Colleagues, good morning or, or good afternoon, depending on where you are joining us from. Uh, we're going to start the webinar now. I'm really delighted to welcome you to this webinar, which is a joint effort between Spectrum, a research consortium that I'll introduce in a moment, and the UK Association of Directors of Public Health. And I'll kick off now with the introduction to Spectrum and the commercial determinants of health. Next slide, Jess. So I just wanted to make a few opening remarks about the current context. Now, I know many of you are joining us from the UK, working in public health or in research, in uh, charities and other organizations and want to learn more about the commercial determinants. But some of you are also joining us from other countries. Next slide. So as all of you will know, although we've been through a, a pandemic, it is still non-communicable diseases. Um, that kill 87, almost 90% of people in the UK, resulting in premature mortality and morbidity, and 70% of deaths globally. Um, and those are the chronic conditions, the non-communicable diseases, um, which are often driven by commercial determinants of health. And we've seen, I think, over the last two years, how these underlying um, conditions can put people at greater risk of any threat, whether it be threats related to climate change or, or the pandemic that we just experienced. And um, we also know that because of the disruption that most or many countries around the world have experienced over the last two, two and a half years, there's a big backlog of care. And we're certainly experiencing that in the UK. And that rate relates from um, early from diagnosis or even from uh, symptom treatment seeking, people not accessing services, not being able to, to having delayed diagnosis, delayed treatment and poorer outcomes. So that will have exacerbated the NCD burden, and that is reflected in declining le levels of both life expectancy and healthy life expectancy across all four developed nations in the UK. Um, health improvement services were also paused. So for people who don't have an underlying condition, but are exposed to environmental or behavioral risk factors that we want to support them to move away from, those services were not as available in the same way. And then finally, one crisis often follows another, and now we're seeing globally um, the impacts of, of a number of different factors, but in Europe in particular, um, the war in Europe and the rising energy prices, record levels of inflation, the highest levels of inflation that we've seen in the UK for 40 years, and the increasing price of goods and services. Um, and that has made, I think, the, the health implications of that are very significant. Colleagues are already writing about that. We know that from previous uh, periods of economic crisis or economic shock. So it's likely to be a very challenging context. So I think looking ahead, we, we would argue three things need to be done, address the current crisis, manage the ongoing pandemic, and restart and strengthen our efforts to address non-communicable diseases. And importantly, that involves also the upstream determinants, which is what we're here to talk about today, and then keep our focus as well on global recovery. Next slide. Um, and you won't be able to see this very well, but I think the slides will be available. Uh, I would refer to the reference on the right. This is a slide that I often use, which just shows the different indirect impacts that uh, families and households and individuals will have experienced through the pandemic as a result of the measures that were taken. And um, so it's not just the direct threat of a communicable disease, but also the implications of other things that occurred alongside that. Next slide. So onto the commercial determinant of health, I'll briefly um, introduce this and, and then hand over to Greg. So I've got a definition on the next slide. And it really is just about, as I said, if you think about all the upstream drivers of health, the, uh, the social determinants of health, housing, uh, your income, the community you live in, family circumstances, um, employment, etc. These are all social determinants, but commercial determinants are also um, environmental factors which are to do with the activities of companies that produce products that harm us. So it is about upstream drivers. It's a, a different dimension that can be added uh, to the social uh, determinants of health. Next slide. So definitions that are used are strategies and approaches, I should say approaches, used by the private sector to promote products and choices that are detrimental to health. These operate at different levels. 
and are relevant locally. You will all see those examples from outdoor advertising of unhealthy products to the availability of unhealthy products locally, regionally. So what happens within particular areas, nationally driven by national policy and also internationally when we think about trade agreements and the roles of intergovernmental organizations in trying to address the commercial determinants. It also relates to consumer and health behavior. Um, and we know that the narrative often from companies that produce alcohol, tobacco, unhealthy foods, gambling companies and others, um, is often about individual responsibility. We see that now actually with the cost of living pressures and discussions about what well, people need to take responsibility to use less energy, or maybe um, you know, charities need to set up warm banks to provide warm spaces to people instead of the focus being on individuals and households having enough money to cover their costs. And our research and practice on the commercial determinants aims to address the drivers and channels through which corporations uh, try to propagate the NCD uh, pandemic. Next slide. And so we argue in Spectrum that policies that operate at the population level, for example, those aiming to address the price, promotion, availability or content of things like um, tobacco products, alcohol, unhealthy foods, haven't been adequately exam examined in terms of their system level impacts. And we also know, as everyone does, that evidence is just one factor that influences policy change. Political and public support is also important and unhealthy commodity producers often delay or derail effective public health policies and practices. And we have multiple examples of that across the unhealthy commodities that I've mentioned as examples, not just in the UK, but globally. So I'm gonna move on now to just introduce Spectrum very briefly. Uh, just a couple of slides on this, so you know the consortium. So we are funded by the UK Prevention Research Partnership, which also funds a number of other consortia and networks. And we're very grateful to the funders for their support. You can see who they are on this slide. Next slide. And this is what we're hoping to achieve. The examples I just gave of how the commercial determinants of health works um, and that they haven't been adequately examined um, and that we really are trying to address these challenges, which I say they're the same here as they were on the previous slide. Next slide. And we come from two previous consortia that we developed from 2008, initially focusing on tobacco, then focusing on tobacco and alcohol, and now this broader commercial determinants perspective that also includes studying things like um, the unhealthy foods that I mentioned before and the activities of the companies that pr to produce, sell or market them. And also we, are, we have an interest and are looking at other issues um, like gambling, for example and the wider activities of commercial companies that can be harmful. Next slide. So this is our vision and our aims, and you can find out more about those on the website and also examples of our work. Next slide. And we are located across the UK. We also have a colleague in Australia at ANU who works with us, Professor Sharon Friel, and you can see the universities that are represented. And really importantly, I think if you click again, Jess, um, we have um, absolutely central partners in our endeavor, our alliances, the main uh, alliances trying to address NCDs in the UK, Alcohol Health Alliance, NCD Alliance, which is international, Smoke Free Action Coalition and the Obesity Health Alliance, and really importantly, the Poverty Alliance here in Scotland, an umbrella organization bringing together a whole range of charities trying to address poverty in Scotland. We have a data partner working with small retailers, the Retail Data Partnership, and we're really fortunate to have involvement from the three main public health agencies in Great Britain. I think this is the last slide for me. And maybe one more after this, we have eight work packages, which again, I just would direct you to our website to find out more about those and some of our speakers lead to those work packages. And I think that's last one. So thank you very much for listening. I'm going to hand over now uh, to Dr. Fell, and I hope that was a useful introduction just to set the scene. Thanks, Linda. Um, so um, my name is Greg Fell. I'm the Director of Public Health in Sheffield and Vice President of ADPH. Um, I'll talk to you for about 10 minutes um, uh, around commercial determinants of health and my take on why this matters from local to global. Um, I'll focus mostly on the local end of that. I occasionally do do some proper work in Sheffield, um, and this is one of the uh, one of my missions over the next couple of years. Um, no slides. Um, uh, I've posted the blog that I'll be talking to. It's it's on it's online now. It's 
it's my pin tweet. So if you want to get the content, you can go 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 to my Twitter account. You can see it there. Um, I will say before I start, thanks to uh, Magda and Amanda in my team, to Alice Wiseman, my Gateshead Oppo, to May Van Chalik and Prof Samantha Thomas, who's in Deakin for thoughts, advice, and guidance on this one. Three three, three parts: introductory stuff um, for me, where to look and what to do, and then some conclusions. So intro points. I've been here, as you all have, many, 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 many times before. Um, and I think it's, it's important for me to acknowledge those who've been working in this space for decades. The, this stuff around commercial determinants of health has been spinning around for a long, long, long time. Um, it's a bit of a resurgence right now, um, but it's really important to acknowledge the historical work focused on individual industries um, that's beginning to coalesce together. Um, and there's a resurgence of interest in, in this now. Um, Obviously, those industries that, that promote harmful products and sell harmful products have been writing the playbook for about 100 years now. Um, and they learn from each other and they benefit from the expertise gleaned from using the same lawyers, the same PR firms. Um, the, the, the tobacco industry arguably uh, developed the playbook in the 50s and 60s. It's been subsequently perfected by many, many, many others over quite a long time now. Um, and it's worth me saying that, that I think the harmful product industries are way more skilled than you a way better resourced at framing and influencing policy across many, many areas of tobacco, um, alcohol, nutrition, probably extends to cars and definitely into oil. Two statements of the blindingly obvious. Number one, health matters for all sorts of reasons. I work in a local authority. Um, the level of financial risk in adult social care and the level of demand in adult social care is both withering and eye-watering. Um, Linda talked a little bit about non-communicable diseases. Have you seen the social care costs after a stroke? There are a thousand strokes in Sheffield. A thousand people have a stroke in Sheffield every year. Um, most of those are preventable. Um, most people have multiple illnesses, not one illness. And read the Global Burden of Disease stuff. Uh, read Barnett's 2012 study in, in the Lancet on multimorbidity. Don't forget to uh, think through mental health aspects in this, which receives far too little attention. So health matters to government for all sorts of reasons, you know, most notably um, NHS and social care costs, but, but economy also. And it's a social justice thing. Um, poor folk are less likely to have good health than rich folk, a statement of the blindingly obvious. Um, so um, the, 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 the ill health is, is denying people a healthy and a decent life. The subtext to all of that is it's all about the economy. Lack of health is a massive constraint on economic growth. Um, and obviously that's quite pertinent to, uh, for the government of the day. It's been, it'll be pertinent for the next government. It was pertinent for the previous government, largely under-recognised. Um, read the Bank of England analysis on long COVID being an enormous worry for economic productivity. Um, uh, the, the long COVID is the tip of the iceberg. So um, he health is all about the economy. Um, ah, but health has nothing to do with me. Ask where the demand problems in your local authority come from if you happen to work, for, work there. Statement of the blindingly obvious two, people don't make unhealthy choices, term used very advisedly, in a vacuum. Um, someone has to be the architect of the world. It's just a matter of who is the architect and why they are designing the world uh, and who, in whose interests they serve. We all know the choices that we make are, 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 are function of heavily, a function of and heavily conditioned by the environment, the education uh, and advertising. Um, uh, I saw a, a viral tweet a long, long time ago that, that, that one company alone, McDonald's was, was the one in point, spends 30 times as much on traditional marketing, never mind the online stuff, as the whole of the then PHE marketing budget for everything. So um, guess what? we make choices conditioned by the environment in which we live. So influencing the environment and the tactics and nature of the industries that try and control that environment are kind of important. So part two of the talk is where, where should we be looking? Um, and this, is, this one is unashamedly aimed at, at local level. I think many of the speakers will talk about national and global. So if you want to talk national and global, you can nod off now and the big guns will start firing in a minute. Um, Framing is the most important thing. Um, see the article in the BMJ about six months ago, the pollution of the pollution of the narrative on health policy by Nathan Manny and others. Uh, I'd imagine many of the authors are in the audience. I know Mark is going to talk in a minute. I still maintain one of the most important health policy articles of the decade thus far. Reframe health away from something that the NHS is responsible for to something that society and the way government operate is responsible for, um, and away from 
individuals to system structural commercial and environmental antecedents of, of health uh, get the framing right on your narrative is really really important get the framing right on why the commercial influences on our health choices matter and matter so much and get the the elevator pitch on this is actually quite difficult because we're so heavily conditioned to think through what this means for individual choice that we forget the stuff that's way 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 upstream of, of individual choices um, if you've not seen it see the recent document from the Inst institute of alcohol studies on documentation of tactics and methods of how industry does this and that was a an example of a lord's inquiry into alcohol licensing uh, some really really good insights into both how industry frames the problem and frames the solution get the counter framing done and sorted where, where would you look, government, where, go, go, local government-wise? Systematically push to move harmful product industry influence out of local authority process and investment. Um, advertising, sponsorship, marketing, planning, education and treatment programs, licensing processes, pensions and investments is tricky space, but shouldn't not go there. What types of business growth we do or don't prioritize, all of which are in, and there's a whole range of spaces that, that many of us are pretty active in in this space. Um, get a few catalysts to get the ball rolling and one obvious catalyst is the recent transport for london junk food advertising ban um, hugely important um uh, and, and 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 so that really 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 helped get the ball rolling narrative language and communication matters who are you talking to most of us on this on, on this seminar i'd imagine of jobbing public health professionals if we're only talking to each other we failed so talk to folk way 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 outside of our field and brief um, uh, and use of our language um, we all see the term lifestyle choices um, get used to get the elevator pitch to challenge that narrative um, get that really really clear um, personally um, i take on nanny state gone mad arguments very directly very head-on blogged on that one quite recently feel free to steal the blog in any way you choose um, uh, and i spend a lot of time raising awareness of the tactics um, of the harmful product industries um, that makes people angry uh, and you should make people angry because people are being duped um, um, I, all, I also take on the ideology of personal responsibility it's been a spectacularly ineffective framing for an awful lot of public policy um, over the last five decades or so that said it's proven remarkably enduring across many 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 governments of lots of different shades and flavors um, so to take that one on directly um, so um, I develop a nuanced approach to working with industry. Um, all or be careful because you're playing with fire. Um, it kind of depends on the type and nature of industry. Big condom versus big tobacco. Condoms are good. Um, uh, they do all sorts of useful things for us. Tobacco, less good. Um, so it kind of depends on, on the nature and, nature and type of industry. Um, take care with regard to being played. You will be outgunned. You cannot control big industry uh, much as we all like to think we can they out they out resource you and they'll outgun you and they'll be 25 steps ahead of you so take care going into that space on on um uh, on uh, partnerships with with industry um i think there's much that we can do on rethinking intervention we're conditioned into thinking intervention is, is delivering services to individuals not changing the nature of a debate um, that is a very very legitimate form of intervention the evidence base on that is fundamentally different to the evidence based on delivering services to individuals or, or educating individuals, for instance. Um, but but there's, there's a lot to be had on, on rethinking the way we think about interventions. Um, I often, uh, it's often said to me, I'm being opinionated. Um, these are my opinions. There's decades of systematic documentation of industry methods and tactics here. Um, you'll hear about many of them today. Um, well, well documented from analysis of papers found in, in the discovery phases of litigation, particularly the tobacco industry, but, but plenty of others. Um, so we can't possibly reduce, refuse X thousand pounds a week because Greg Fell doesn't like fizzy pop. Um, that is a real life example that came up for me. To be clear, I'm not anti-fizzy drink. I even drink Coca-Cola. I am anti the harm that comes from it. And there's something about um, um, renormalizing the environment, forming a line in the sand and, and working back from that line in the sand. Um, and the, so the cumulative and normalization stuff kind of, kind of, kind of matters quite a little bit there. Um, industry will self-regulate is another line I hear regularly. Um, yeah, of course, there's a long history of successful industry self-regulation, not. Um, see the literature on the public health responsibility deal. Um, pursuing that led to way more harm to our health 
than the counterfactual of industry regulation. So um, um, I'll cut to the chase um, and the concluding thoughts are, uh, uh, from me are th thus. Commercial determinants of health are as important as social determinants of health in, in framing how we best improve health. And this is all about how we improve health. Some will say we can't do this. Um, uh, some will say it's politically unpalatable, maybe. Um, but that isn't to say that public health doesn't have a responsibility to set out an evidence base. Um, yes, it's difficult. Um, yes, being absolutist is quite hard. Draw a line in the sand and move back from that line in the sand carefully, but go in one direction. Yeah, I can't kick oil investment out of a pension scheme. It's not my choice, but I can draw attention to the consequences of, of choices that are made by harmful product industries. So, so, so and be relentless on that one. Um, my, my attention is um, relentlessly focused on commercial uh, environments, and I accept I'm sometimes swimming, swimming, swimming against other people's tides. Um, principles, we either want healthier folk and prepared, or we're prepared to accept the consequences of not, um, uh, and the principles of where and how we draw the line in the sand. So I accept some of this stuff isn't easy, um, but, but getting it wrong means that we will uh, have less healthy populations and bear all of the consequences of that. Last point from me, often said I'm anti-business and anti-growth, not true. Um, I'm anti-harm that comes from the activities of business um, and healthier people lead to more economic growth than less healthy people. Linda, I shall stop there. Thank you, Greg. That was really helpful. I think absolutely sets the scene, <clears throat> taking that from the local to the international um, and just giving that really important background information. And also just the commitment you have to the topic has, has really been absolutely phenomenal.